I often mention my very first software job, but a lot of you don't know that I actually got rejected before I got accepted for that job. And it had nothing to do with what I knew technically. So in this video, I'm gonna explain the things that you have to do to give you the best chance of having successful software interviews. So first I wanna give you a little bit of background of exactly how that happened, because I know some of you may be thinking, you know, how did you get rejected and then accepted? I had been applying nonstop and I actually had been on a few software interviews before I got called for this specific position. So this company gave me a chance for a junior developer position. I went in for the interview. It was in person at the time. I explained everything I knew. Technically, I explained my projects and just how much I enjoy coding. But there were some questions that they asked me that I did not do a good job on. And I had a feeling that I wasn't going to get the job, but I decided to ask if there was anybody that was interviewing for the position outside of me. And they mentioned to me that there was one other person that had just graduated from school with a computer science degree that was also interviewing for the position. I ended up not getting that position obviously to the person that just graduated with a degree in computer science. So at that time, I thought that everything that I was learning as far as coding was going to be a waste of time because I didn't have a degree. And what was the point to keep trying? Because if I'm going to be put against somebody that does have a degree, I'm most likely going to lose out. But I was wrong. So about a week after I got the rejection email, I got a call from the recruiter again. And she let me know that there was a position open for another team and a new project and asked me if I was interested in it. Obviously, since I was desperate to get my first job, I told her yes. And I asked her, what made you call me? And she said, the team really enjoyed interviewing with you. And that was all she said. So I really think it's important that you show personality. I would spend so much time working on the technical aspects, doing research, making sure I could explain my projects well, understanding the language of coding. And I didn't put a lot of importance on showing my personality and being myself. And I ended up forgetting what was the most important part of any interview, whether it's software or not. And the most important thing is convincing the company that you could be a valuable part of the team and that they see you working there with them. And the only way to do this is to be yourself. I've said this before, that you can always learn a technical aspect to things and companies know this. So if they have two candidates where somebody is very technical, but they don't communicate well, they don't talk a lot compared to somebody that might not be as technical, but they communicate well, they're fun to be around and they integrate themselves within the team. Nine times out of 10, they'll take the candidate that's less technical. And the reason for this is because it's a big investment to hire somebody for any company. You have the initial cost, of what it takes to hire somebody. And then you have obviously the salary and benefits and any other things that are included in the benefits package. So they wanna make sure that they hire somebody that they want to have there for a long amount of time and not just somebody that can punch out code and you don't even know that they're half the time. So when I say show personality, I don't mean being unnatural or being somebody that you aren't. What I mean by showing your personality is finding some kind of common ground between you and the interviewer. Obviously, whatever language you're interviewing for, that's already gonna be something that you have in common. So if you can find something to relate outside of coding or something with even within coding that you both enjoy make sure you talk about that and they'll start to picture you as being a part of the team of somebody that they enjoy working with the next thing is be honest now when i first started i would go into interviews and they would ask me questions i had no idea what they were asking me and i would try to make up some type of response and it never worked it got awkward for me and it got awkward for the interviewer because we both knew that i was trying to come up with any kind of answer just to be able to say something it's a common misperception you know that we go into interviews and we think that if I don't answer every question correctly, I have no chance of getting a job. And that's really not the case. Obviously, there are some things that you should know before you go into the interview, especially if it's something on the job description or job requirements, but you don't have to know everything that they ask you. What you can do instead, if they ask you a question and you don't know, be honest and tell them. You can say, I'm not too familiar with this. Can you give me some more insight? Or you can say, no, I'm not too familiar with that, but I'll definitely be researching it after my interview to make sure I get up to speed and I can understand these concepts better. I am saying be honest, but you have to be very careful with this because if they ask you many questions and you have the same response of you not being familiar, you have to research it, then that could obviously disqualify you from the position. But being honest about what you don't know is way better than trying to fluff some kind of answer and them getting a bad vibe about you in general. They want somebody that's honest and authentic. The next thing is that your appearance does matter, but not in the way that you may think. When I first started going on my software engineer interviews, I was coming from an account manager background. So every interview that I had went on before, I was and shirt and tie. And I showed up to my first software interviews with a shirt and tie and I almost got laughed at because it made everybody feel uncomfortable because that's just not the culture of software. So depending on what you're interviewing for, it might not be a bad idea to ask what's the dress code so you have an idea. And if it's a video interview, then you can do the best trick of all time, business up top, and party down below. Another thing is you will always have a time to where to ask you, you know, do you have any questions? And this is the only time that you have to kind of get the interview under your control a bit. 
because before this, they'll just be asking you all of the questions and you have to answer. So the questions that you choose are very important. Of course, you can ask the typical questions, you know, you know, how do you like the culture? What do you like most about working here? The questions that everybody always asks. But the key is to ask questions to where you're trying to get a sense on what you need to do to be successful in that position. You're asking questions to show them that you're already picturing yourself working there and you want to make sure that you can start producing from day one. So a question I like to ask is, if you were to hire me and you look back a year from my employment, what would I have done for you to say that this was a successful hire? This way you get a sense of exactly what you need to do if they offer you the position and you don't have to think and wonder of, am I doing a good job? Or do they like what I'm doing? You'll get a sense before you even start of what you need to do. Another question that I ask is, is there anything in my background or my experience that could disqualify me from the position? Now, the reason I ask this is so there's no gray area when I leave the interview. You know, a lot of times when you go to these interviews, you don't know if you're doing a great job or not because everybody's on their best behavior, everybody's smiling, everybody's nice, and they might not like you as a candidate at all. So I ask this question to know when I'm leaving because most interviewers will be very honest with you about the things that you're lacking and you need to get stronger in. So in the next interview, I'm a much stronger candidate and a stronger developer in general. So these are just two example questions that I would ask, but you can think of more and you can research more of these type of questions that you want to ask and not just the typical, you know, what's the company holiday schedule or something like that. Ask questions that let them know that I want to be here. I see myself as being here. So let me know what I need to do to be successful. And then another thing is just to remember that every job might not just be for you. You know, we get our hopes up anytime we get an interview and it's very disappointing when somebody doesn't offer you the job or you get that dreaded rejection email. You know, it, it can be pretty disappointing. But approaching each interview as just an interview and not a life or death situation will help you out a lot as far as not putting so much pressure on yourself. Sometimes you can do everything right and it might just not be the best fit. I've had a lot of interviews to where I really wanted the job and it just didn't go my way. So I was really disappointed afterwards wondering what else I could have done to get the job and it just wasn't for me. But then later on, I run into another position and it ended up being one of the best positions that I've ever had. So I wouldn't have been able to get to the better position if I would have been staying stuck on the ones that I didn't get. So over time, the more you apply, you'll start to not let it bother you so much when you don't get invited for interviews or if you do get interviews and they tell you that you're not the best candidate. You just have to keep going and keep moving until you get to the job that's for you. Try not to take it personally because every job and every company might not be the best for you. And that's exactly what happened even with my very first software job that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. So if you want to know why that job actually ended up not being the best job for me, then you can watch this next video. Other than that, thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this.